Praise the Lord. Greet each one of you who is watching this short video or listening it through it through the podcast in the name of Matchless Jesus Christ. New month, isn't it? Especially this month is very close to my heart. You know why? In the year 1978, God brought me to this world. And from that day until now, this moment, He's been so faithful. Even when I wasn't faithful, He had been faithful. That's the God that we serve, don't we? All right. The words that I took or God gave me for this month as the word of encouragement is from Psalm 112, 7. It says, they will, they will not have the fear of bad news because their heart their hearts are steadfast and their faith is in, is in God. They will not hear bad news. They will never have the fear of bad news. That's because their hearts are steadfast and their faith is on God Almighty. Let me tell you one small story. It could be a known story. You could have read this in social media. There was an atheist who always claim that is no one called God. That is nothing and absolutely nothing called God. Because I work hard, I earn money, I provide for my family, I take care of myself. Where did this God come from? Why would I give all the credit and honor to God when I do everything? So he never touched it. That that is some, something called supernatural power. That is someone called God. He never trusted. One fine day, he went out for trucking all alone and he was climbing a mountain. He almost reached the peak, the top of the mountain, but unfortunately he had a slip, a deadly slip. He rolled almost down. He thought that he's going to be into pieces in very short time. He's going to land to the ground dead. But fortunately, he caught hold of a branch and he was hanging there. But there was no one to rescue him. No help at all. And that's when he thought, okay, let's give it a try. Everybody says that God is omnipresent. He's just a call away. Let me go ahead and try. So he shouted on the top of his lungs. Dear God, if you are true, if you are alive, can you help me? Can you rescue me? Can you answer me? Can you respond to me, to my cry? And our faithful and compassionate God responded, Dear son, what do you want? He was excited. He was like, God, everybody tells that you're all powerful. So can you rescue me? I'm hanging here. I just slipped from the top. Can you rescue me? And God responded, Yes, I can, provided you obey me. He said, Yes, tell me, what should I do? All I need is to be alive, to get rescued from the situation. And God said, leave your hand. He got annoyed. He was so annoyed, he started shouting at God. I thought you were a good man. You are a good God. I thought you will rescue me, protect me. Give me life. But you want me to die? You want me to leave the only source that I have? I'm just holding to my one hand. And you want me to leave that and die? He had multiple questions. But after that, God did not respond. The next day, the rescue team somehow heard about this incident and came there to rescue this man. But to their surprise, they saw him hanging dead. He was no more. But yet another thing the rescue team noticed. That he was just three or four feet above the ground. All he, he should have done, he was expected to do, was to leave the hand and land on the ground and be saved. That is all that was expected out of him. But he failed to obey God. Because he looked at the situation which wasn't favoring him. He compared God's word with his current situation. Do you remember what Peter did? When God said, walk, 
He was walking on the troubled water as long as he was concentrating on Jesus. But the moment he saw the troubled water, he started sinking. My dear brother, my dear sister, God is speaking to some, some of you. He wants you to listen to his word today. All this while he has been asking you to do something. But you have been denying his words, looking at your current situation. But God is speaking to you today. Do what God says. Because he knows what blessing his command will bring to your life. No one lives in future but for our God. He, he lives in future so he knows what is awaiting for you. That is the confidence that we need to have on him. That God looks at the situation from the future. We look at the situation from present. So when God tells you do this, do this. Don't try to be intellectual. Don't try to analyze the plan of God. We would not be able to fathom the plan of God. When God says do, just do. That is what God is expecting from us. Because Bible says Joseph was in the prison and God was with him. You might be going through a life which, is, which resembles a life of prison. You might be walking through the wilderness. You could be having an unpredictable or uncurable disease. But he is still a miracle working God. He is still with you. Just like he was with Joseph, even though when Joseph was in the prison, God took Joseph to prison not to destroy him, but to fulfill his plan for him. My dear brother, my dear sister, obey God. Don't allow destruction in your life. Don't allow distraction in your life. The Satan is here to distract you from the vision. Satan is here to distract you from the plan of God. Don't allow him to succeed. Let me tell one another small story of uh, information on how the Satan distracts you. When the lion decides to hunt down a flock of sheep or any animal, a buffalo or zebra, whatever you call it, when it plans to go ahead and hunt it down, you know what it does? It sends one lion first. And that lion comes right in front of the prey and roars on the top of its lungs. The animal could be the buffalo or any other animal. The prey gets threatened by that roaring without knowing that but for roaring, that lion cannot do anything because it is old, it is weak, it cannot hunt down. Moreover, it, it, it doesn't even have teeth. It is fit for nothing but for roaring. But the, the prey gets threatened and runs to the opposite direction, knowing not that the ferocious, all-powerful, strong lions or group of lions are waiting there to hunt it down, to tear it into pieces. That's how Jonah did. When God wanted him to go to the other direction, he went to the other direction and we all know what happened to him. It is always nice, wonderful to have fish in our belly. Never to be inside the belly of the fish, isn't it? Never run away just because of one threat in your life. Never run away because a few, a few group of people stood against you. Never run away because you had a sickness. God still has plan for you. All he wants you to do is to have steadfast mind and faith in him and obey him unconditional. Don't tell him, God, if you do this, I will do that. If things change, I will do this. No. God wants you to completely listen to his words. So my dear brother, my dear sister, I want you to encourage you. Whatever God spoke to you all this while, get back to him and tell God, here I am to obey you. And if that is going to be your thought today, let us pray. A dear loving Heavenly Father, we commit ourselves into your throne of grace. We could have disobeyed in the past, O oh Father. Forgive our sins, O oh Lord Jesus. From today, from
from this new month, from this first day of this month of June, we surrender ourselves, our lives, our thoughts, our everything into your throne of grace. Father God, speak to us. We have our ears open to listen to the sweet whisper of Father. And we assure you that we are going to listen to every word that you speak to us. Knowing that these words are to prosper us, not to destroy us. And moreover, every old and weak and, and powerless lion that is going to roar in front of us, we are going to roar even powerful, knowing that we are sons and daughters of Lion of Judah, and prove that Satan is a loser being. Thank you, Lord, for energizing us today and giving us the thoughts to stand against the schemes of the Satan. Be with us, guide us. You be glorified. In Jesus' matchless name, we thank and pray. Amen, amen, and amen. God bless you. Have a victorious month ahead. God is going to change your situation.